All right, guys. This is Craze. I just wanted to go over at kind of like where we're at in the season. So with pretty minimal investment, we're only Rune Master level 10. We'll be able to go to like Void Rift level 22 plus. And we're, this is just where we started dying. I haven't really tried to push this too much yet. Um, we can get the 30 plus on this. I haven't done this for the day, but it hasn't been too much of a problem. And uh, getting max rewards on raid hasn't been an issue either. So going into descent raid, if you need to do um, get like the damage rewards, you're gonna get them. Uh, so pretty much everything's worked with the build still. I mean, minions always, always kind of have been um, good whenever we've used them, but I think that they've even better this season. So even with uh, nerfs that they did with the, within the last few seasons here, uh, this season you're able to do a few different things here. So if you take a look, you're able to go ahead and get attack enhanced skill rune effect. And that's kind of one of the things I wanted to go over for the video. Uh, it's why with like minimal investment, I've been able to play other games and do a few other things. And uh, only be like at Rune Master level 10 where I see quite a few other people like getting up into like 80 plus now. Doing a lot of investment on their characters. And we're able to do almost the same stuff that they're doing. So I'm able to already go into maps that are able to give me gear that's like 155 plus. And we're able to kill uber bosses and do the mines. One thing I do recommend, especially for hardcore, is to use fire status effect immunity elixirs and bleed immunity, frozen pots and whatnot. In the mines, things have a very bad habit of giving a lot of status effects out. And getting wounded or burned and whatnot in hardcore can kill you pretty quick. So ju just a, a heads up to people um, when they're playing and whatnot. Um, so let's go over a few of the things. One of the first things would be the skill tree and whatnot. So I'll just link right here what I think are the best runes, uh, kind of for minions. So you got the the just basic, these are all the minion runes you want to use, and you're going to use while you're leveling through the campaign. So you want to keep those in mind while you're going from act to act. And once you figure out if you're going to go Abysslings or Rune Knight, which we're doing Rune Knight right here, you're going to switch to these runes right here. These are going to be your very important attack enhanced skill rune effect runes. And these are going to be the ones that are affected by all of your gear that can roll enhanced skill rune effect or attack enhanced skill rune effect. Now, other stuff on your tree will be affected by this, but these are the ones that give you the heavy damage increases. Uh, Mark of Focus, Hazy Melody, and Unite Crowd will all be benefited and do astronomical uh, amounts of uh, damage for you as long as you are enhancing them with as much attack enhance and enhance skill rune effect as you can on your gear. So I have a few videos, uh, any of the past videos that talk about the builds go over this. But I just wanted to be, the, I just wanted this to be like a quick video for people that haven't really played before or anybody that's a veteran that just doesn't really know what's going on with the new season and then how to kind of scale your gear really quickly. And it's going to be done with the ruby jewels if you see in the top right there. I'll show you like just a basic 7.1. You can get up to 9 points on one of those with a perfect. You can get even more attack and head skill in effect. So that's not even a perfect one. Now, here is going to be one of the setups that I think is easiest for people. Most people have fun when they do whirlwind in games like this. Uh, th this whirlwind setup here is going to allow you to get your gather minions down to a very short cast time. Instead of having it be uh, anything over 10 seconds, it's always going to be like 3 to 1 second when you use the spell activation on hit. Then off to the right there, I just link a couple of linkable runes that I think are pretty important for uh, when you're leveling. Because I'm always trying to figure out, you know, what I want to take legendary first and whatnot. Those are all a good bet. Uh, time acceleration, increased duration. Those are gonna be used with multiple link runes. Uh, you probably won't take those out of your tree, so it's a good bet that you can go there. Whether or not you wanna awaken those right off the bat, I don't know about that, but they're a good one to kind of take legendary right off the bat because you're gonna use them with many different rune stones. Now, in the tree here, this is a quick setup of what you're gonna kind of set up. You're gonna to try to do your Unite Crowd, Mark of Focus and Hazy Melody and try to focus on these as much as you can. Best way to enhance them is just kind of dampen resource cost, enhance enhance effect. 
Both of these are going to be the easiest to find um, out of the guild boxes and are going to be the ones that, well, probably not easiest to find, but they're going to be the ones that you're going to be searching for that are going to enhance most of your skills the fastest. Uh, improved technique not required or even that important. It just increases the rune level of your of your runes here. But if you get it, remember that it does that. It does even though it says minion damage on there. Some people just kind of like overlook it and go, "Well, I don't really use minions." Well, even if you're not using minions, the rune level accounts for any rune. So I don't have to link it to these. You can link it to any rune that you like. Next setup is Mark of Focus. I think Mark of Focus is very powerful show you guys right here in a couple of different clips but um the mark of focus seems to just eliminate these mobs that have the the high-end aura on them so i highly recommend using mark of focus and maximizing this as much as you can getting that damage from minions increased to as high as possible and uh immediately whenever you're you get a mob that is just taking forever to kill they have a defense aura they have regen or anything like that you pop that on them and it's probably gonna take them down pretty quick now we already show kind of like a whirlwind setup and then what you're going to do for gather minions you're pretty much just whirlwinding gather minions and using time acceleration and in decreased duration to just enhance this as much as you can there's a lot of different setups you can do for whirlwind so that's going to be up to you um this season i mean if you're just wondering what we're trying um i've never tried the knockback source before they change it to where you actually get cold energy when you knock back so we're trying that out We've got the extract energy here, and sometimes I will switch out savagery or lower armor to convert this to cold so that we get more cold energy. And what we're doing with that, just to show, is I was just kind of testing a few things like the 98% the cold energy effect. I wanted to see how much more damage to reduction we could get when we were getting cold energy, and it works. It gives a lot of damage reduction. Like you're, you're, If you needed to um, enhance some of your damage reductions with earth energy, cold energy, anything like that, say you want to attack faster with poison energy or just maximize all of your damage that you're doing that's not minions with fire you can do that it's good to know that now with your build you're going to have your runes that enhance everything and are your support runes that we kind of just went over uh Whirlwind's pretty much enhancing and supporting your minions by moving you through the mobs, uh, giving you a way to, to pretty much phase through mobs without getting stuck. Um, it channels and does the gather minions verity, or we use, we use verity just for the armor and the elemental resist amp amplification. You can use whatever you want. It's the one I recommend, though. You can use any runes that you want here. You know, a few ones that I think about even, like, especially when you're first starting out, Fighting Spirit. Fighting Spirit's going to give you physical damage taken dampening. When you turn it legendary, it's going to give you elemental damage taken dampening while you're hitting. You know, the damage you're doing is not going to really be a big deal with these runes because you're never going to do as much damage as your minions until you, unless you change a few things up. So you're mainly just looking to support them. So things like lower armor is going to help. Uh, things like cut would help. Um... Knockback's going to help you knock things back here. We were using stun on it for a while, or impact, to, to give us even more stun effect on here. Uh, the one I recommend right out the gate is you're going to have, you're not going to have a lot of room or even have a six link right off the bat. So people that are wondering like, kind of how to start out is just kind of grab increased duration and time acceleration and attach it to a few of these skills. And then go ahead and try to get the guild box for these but you're just going to have your aura sitting off to the side until you get something for them and then for whirlwind you're probably only going to have a few links on it so i would just go for channeling enhancement to get that damage taken dampening and then go ahead and just throw spell activation on hit on it other than that you can throw anything on there if you need to regen some hit points you can throw hunger on there if you want the extra range savagery so anything that you don't have to sense you can throw on there it's really easy as for shouts, shout of provocation is great. Um, we it'll give you. We'll even go over a few of the shouts. So shouts are pretty important this season. When you use shouts, you're going to get um, a new rune here called Predator's Roar. It's going to make things take increased damage. So that's kind of nice. Uh, but if you don't have Shout of Justice, which I've been using this season because of all the status effects that go off in the uh, in the mines, I just really don't want to get status effect and get killed. So 
we can go in with Shadow Justice for now. Um, other good ones to go with is Shadow Provocation. This is going to give you armor ramp, and you're going to taunt for your minions. That's pretty nice. The Awakening I do for this one is usually the Vamp Skin. As soon as you activate it, you're going to get hit, and if you get hit for a really big damage, this is going to actually heal you while you're getting hit, so that'll help you live. And then you got Shout of Terror, which is going to help you stun everything around you and actually do apply on hit effects. So with Shout of Terror, you can actually do all sorts of things like bleed, um, any hot on hit effect, cut, stuff like that. So it's a pretty cool shout. For those of you that don't want to use a shout, I highly recommend checking out any of the totems. All of the totems are pretty cool. I usually start with weak, weakened totem because it just makes you do more damage. It's easy to do. But if you do pull one of the um, one of the additional totems that you can get, something like weak and damage totem here, this gives you damage dampening. And there's a lot of combinations you can do to get like a whole bunch of damage dampening with this. So those are the setups for you. If you're interested in what to use with the Rune Knights, um, so your Abysslings are kind of just going to feed off of a couple of runes that your Rune Knights are using. In this case, we're having them feed off of the HP runes. If you want to do maximum damage, you know, you're going to do something like throw strike on here with concentrated area damage and probably something like melee damage amplification. Mana Storm's a really good bet to pull for one of your first um, box runes if you're going to get a rare link rune. And for one of your first rare runes, I'd probably pull either minion damage or minion presence. So if you know you're going to go rune knights, minion presence helps because getting the max HP up really helps them. But if you don't know what minions you're going to go right off the bat, minion damage helps with all of the minions, and it's a massive amount of damage. So if you want to know what to pull for your first ma magic rune, I'd do minion damage. If you want to know what to pull for your first link rune, I would do something like spell activation on hit. This is really big for gathered minions, or something like a mana storm. The rest of them you can just kind of that's going to be it for the skill tree. Um, I do use a movement to activate Bulwark on Protection, but we've done this with other builds, and it's nothing really new here. Um, any, you can activate any defensive skill that you want, and that's what I would do with skill tree. So to figure out what you want to put, if you, if you, let's say you have like half your skill tree over here, and you really don't know what to do because you just have a couple of minions going. All right, so grab your minions. grab the, Make sure you have your enhanced effects here. And then if you want to, you can do something like a channeling effect to activate gather minions. It doesn't have to be whirlwind. And then make sure that you get some kind of shout and some kind of defensive rune. All of these mixed with the with the movement rune pretty much makes a build. You can do a lot more unique things like this, but if you want to just try out using a shout, defensive rune, all, all the different goodies the game has, this is gonna pretty much do it. This is what my skill setup looks like. Still debating on adding illusion axes here or something different, so. We'll see what we're going to do. Illusion Axes will probably awaken for the Earth Energy here. As for gear, um, I have a few different videos on this already. So if you guys want to check that out, I, I would go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm just going to show you kind of how to make the kind of gear that you want. They haven't changed anything in any seasons here on crafting too much. So... I would really like recommend checking that out. If you want to see kind of what stats you're looking for, here's what you're looking for. You're looking for something like this on your necklace. Minion damage, minion crit damage from wa from the uh, water is the best, I think. For your rings, I usually go for a Capri ring for the authority. And um, then we try to get like minion attack speed. We need to re-roll this. It's not what we want. But then we get minion damage amp, uh, crit damage, and minion critical pretty easy gloves can roll all sorts of minion stats so minion attack speed damage amp and crit damage is what i usually go for but there's maximized damage increase there's all sorts of things gloves can roll so most of your damage stats real quickly just to go over necklace rings gloves and then your weapon later on when you have mats to craft heavily you're going to go try to do things like get enhance effect enhance skill effect you're going to try to even re-roll that to get the enhanced skill effect again. As for the chest this season, instead of making a minion chest, I went for a full damage dampening chest with attack block expertise. And that's because in the rune master, uh, you can actually masteries, you can actually get more block expertise. So I just want to see how that goes. 
As for the belt, I just usually use a normal belt and try to go for my resist and my hit points on there. Using a minion belt is just fine. And don't forget that a lot of minion stats can reroll into damage. So just because you have like minion hit rating or something, and you're like, oh, I didn't really like the minion hit rating I rolled on that or whatnot. Well, look what it did on these shoulders. Rolled into minion damage app. Now what makes this build so successful for hardcore, I just wanted to go over it real quickly, is you're able to transfer a lot of damage into your rune knight and stay very, very tanky. Other classes aren't even able to, to transfer damage into other things. So this is actually really big. The only thing you can really do with other classes is kind of transfer some damage into your totems. So um, being able to do this is pretty big. So right now we have rune knight damage taking 14% with our shoulders. I would also recommend trying to get a Lacrima with a pair of shoulders so that you can transfer even more Runite damage into them. And then another easy one that you can get is just a Relic. I recommend Leo in Hardcore. And that's going to give your Runite even more hit points and you're going to transfer even more damage. And that's going to take care of a lot of damage reduction and stuff that you need to be able to get through most of the content in the game without dying. All right, uh, that's the main stuff with the build. Here's the charms. The charms have been changed, so let's go over those real quick. We go. I went ahead and went with the Seftar first, and we're trying to work on Hamal next. So kind of charms you're looking for, just minion damage. If you need hit points and chaos resist or element resist, go ahead and do it. We haven't had anything better drop, so that's why we're using these. If you can, you're looking for critical rate, critical damage or you're looking for things like minions do maximize, maximize double damage, uh, minion attack speed, minion critical damage, all these kind of things are really good for you. Though. Now, when it comes to the charms, 230% is going to give us 8% more damage amp, so all this is pretty good. Still worth going down to 230. Um, if you are a crit build and you happen to be a dodge person, it's a minion person, you, it's possible now, so as you see, you can actually get 30% medium critical damage and whatnot. I don't really feel like it's worth going deep into the Leo tree, but you can get a little bit of crit if you wanted to. I still like to go into Hamal to get that HP amplification. But now you also have options like Akala and whatnot, where if you go all in, you can actually get chance for your minions to do double maximized damage. So what we do here is I kind of look through all these, see what you want to do. And um, still kind of go for the max Seftar one because the damage amp is just kind of a no-brainer. But if you decide, if you do get some good Akula charms, Leo charms or whatnot, maybe even go into that. See what happens with that. Just, just an update for people that haven't seen that there's been charms that have done that. Last thing to do is you're going to be doing a lot of charm or uh, jewel upgrading. Don't forget, you can get some critical rate from these. You can get critical damage. You got minion critical damage right there. If we were to roll, this starts off with um, got minion damage on this one. I think there's minion attack speed too. Even Let's take a look at it here. Please. Yeah, 7.9% minion attack speed before we even roll it. So you can get some pretty good stats for your gear. If you want to see kind of like what my gear is using. I went with a little bit of resist and crit damage so far. Over here, we're just doing the energy effect and the critical damage. And then on most everything else, I'm just kind of doing the attack enhanced and skill rune effect. So this will be a fun thing to do while you're doing this. Thing. There's the relics, there's the charms. And uh, so far we've gone over kind of the basics of what you're gonna do for a full setup. If you want, here's the masteries I like to use. Some people ask about the masteries, I don't really ever show these. Uh, when it comes to alchemy, that's up to you. This is going to be kind of tailored to if you need health potions, mana potions, or whatnot. But when it comes to the masteries, it's kind of a no-brainer for minions. You either go down the crit path or the attack speed and damage amp path. As for the armor path, when I'm first leveling at least, I like to get the armor. I like to get the elemental resist for me and my minions. And I like to get the damage taken band. If you need the chaos resist, you can go for it. If you think the HP amplification is where you're at at the moment, go for the HP amp. All of it's good. As for this side, I like to go for HP for me. My minions don't really need it as much as we do. And then I like to go for movement speed. 
And then the final one, I'll usually go Aura of the Seal with that. If you're using the other Rune Knights, you must go Minion Element Penetration. This is very important. And if you want to do more damage, they have Minion Damage, or they even have increased stats to help you. So you can kind of go for whatever you want with the Master. That's the build for it, guys. Um, with not even very much investment into the build so far, we've been able to do some pretty good damage and get some good numbers, like, I, like I've shown. Uh, being able to get to Void 22 plus, do 155 content, and even be in the mines and not really even take too much damage. If you wanna see just like a quick damage test. We'll do the double Rune Knight spam here real quick. We've got a pretty massive whirlwind. About 2.5 2. billion there before we have to redo the, uh, the amp summon there. It's really not too bad for only being about Rune Master 10. All right, hopefully that helps people. Um, anybody that's wondering about minions, yeah, I highly recommend them. Um, instead of doing a lot of the energy effects you're going to see everybody else doing for the season. Once again, we're mainly just kind of going into these things like this attack and skill that affect. It's going to affect all sorts of things for us. 